Well, I'm back in the TRX. It's kind of interesting because last night I rode the bike and uh, like, so I went from the smallest thing that like very legitimately with a ramp or a couple of strong dudes, you could just put into the back of this one. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, it's, it's gonna be kind of funny because it's like when you're in something like this, that it's like, it's gonna take, it take a pretty massive hole in the highway to do anything. Um, Cause yeah, like I, I didn't really realize, like I knew it wasn't great, but this interstate um, is pathetic. Like, like there were, like there were spots where it's like, if I had, if I would have been turning on my bike, the, uh, the bumps were bad enough that the front tire would have came up enough that I would have lost control. Like that's just, it's like, it's kind of funny. It's like considering, you know, tax dollars are spent for roads. I mean, like there's so many things that our government wastes money on that can just be wiped out and make sure all the roads are perfect. Cause it's like people, and you know, like you can do damage to like even a pretty normal car, like a decent sized pothole can like mangle something like even on this if I'm going fast enough so it's like you know it isn't even like it's like oh well bikers don't need to be on bikes like cars are safer anyway or you know or like oh well like you don't need to have some low slung car it's like yeah but the thing is it's like and then kind of like uh you see it in, with those bad rainstorms it's like there's that one little section of highway that Megan got in that video that uh like it pu pulls up so bad it's like two and a half inches of water and, I mean, it wasn't even really raining all that hard, and there's two inches of water there. And, like, the ruts, and, like, that's another thing I noticed on the Harley, like, and it makes sense that it puddled so bad, is these ruts on this highway are ridiculous. Like, if you had a pretty, like, if you had a pretty heavy rain that was solid, there'd be basically two rivers with a mound in the middle. Another thing uh, that's kind of interesting that, I mean, it's... It's technically kind of a downfall with the truck in a way. Uh, I mean, obviously it's not the truck's fault, it's mine. But I really hope I don't end up with road rage in this because like I haven't had a situation that was really bad and uh, what I see up ahead of me is not boating well for that staying a thing. But last Sunday when we were going to my parents, I don't know why, but there was, there was like this group, um, it was like Oregon, Oklahoma, Washington and Virginia and they were like they were staggered so there was one in the passing lane so he shouldn't even have been there because he was not or they I guess because I don't know what any of these people were um but yeah there was one like lit, like staying in the passing lane not even catching anybody then one in the driving lane and then another one in the passing lane that also wasn't really catching anybody. And then another one in the driving lane. So they're like this. And like none of them are even going close to the speed limit. Like I think the one going the fastest was probably going 65. And I've mentioned this before. The interstate speed limit here is 80. And it's like, you know, and then you come up on them and they've got like 20 car lengths to the next car. And they, they like won't go over really quick and let you get it like get in the passing lane. It's just you've got like a bunch of people going well under the speed limit and two of them decide they need to camp in the passing lane. Like this is why like if out-of-staters came here and could drive and didn't screw up our housing market, I would be all for it. But every single one of those ones that doesn't drive, I should be able to sue their state when I have a heart attack for giving them a driver's license because they're that stupid. Like, they're, like there are so many of them that cannot, that couldn't drive their way out of a wet paper bag and that's like, you know, like that saying is usually about fighting or strength of some sort. But imagine if you were in a car and the paper bag was wet. I mean, you might not be able to get through the side of the paper bag in a Prius or a smart car, but I mean, heck, as heavy as they're just pushing through the side of the bag. But yeah, let's hope because uh, the main point here was that this truck's a little bit too loud and fast and stuff and it's not as inconspicuous as the car. Cause like that, I just, I got furious and stomped it and like zigzagged through them. By the time I finally lifted, I was doing like 98. But it's like, yeah, th this this gets its speed up quicker. See, and that's the thing, this proves my point, is like, I, like there's this pretty decent sized group of traffic that I'm coming up on and thinking like, oh great, we're gonna have another one of them. And like this, 
person that just got over for me is from Montana. And I guarantee the moment I pass, they're going to pop back out because they're gaining on these two. Yeah, exactly. See, he's like, this guy's going faster than me. I'm going right on the speed limit. But it's like, he's going faster than me. I'm going to let him get through. And like, that's the thing. That's an incredibly simple thing to do. Like there, and like, he didn't even have to get off his cruise because he wasn't that close to the car and the driving lane he was catching. It's just, and I mean, I like, and I get it. Like we have the, well, I don't know probably the like second most maybe third most beautiful state um and like i get it you're like oh look at all this beautiful scenery but like if you're gonna be like gawking off that much that you're not gonna realize you're in the passing lane going 15 or 20 under the speed limit like take little two-lane highways or something or you know like but yeah it's I, it's just kind of funny though because like i said in this like I mean, even if the person had no idea what this is, like if they were to call the cops, it's like giant blue truck. And I mean, I guess the Ram on the tailgate's big enough. Giant blue Ram truck. Like if I road rage in the car and someone tries to call the cops, it's like gray four door car. And like the 200 logo is like maybe an inch tall. So they wouldn't even be able to say it's a 200. So it's like, yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't know. If you're that big of a cry, maybe, because, like, the moment somebody, like, if I've had that happen where I, I'm, like, tired or, like, just not in a hurry, and I'll, like, you know, like, have somebody road rage at me, and then I'm, like, I look down at this bit, I'm like, oh, dang, I deserve that. See, like, here we have somebody that isn't doing that. It's like, they weren't even, I, I, like, I don't know, that truck has a big camper, like one of those bed campers on it, so. Like, maybe they weren't catching them very quick, but, like, they're in the passing lane going at least 15 under the speed limit. Like, go over really quick. Even if you have to slow down, let me, let me go through. I'm going the speed limit. Like, I mean, there's only one play, like, well, I mean, there's a couple little, like, Billings is three lanes almost all the way through and a bunch of the, uh, like a bunch of the other cities, like Helena has it for a little while between a couple bridges, but there's not three lanes almost anywhere in Montana. So it's like, you can't just be like in the passing lane going 60, like you can't do it. Um, but yeah, like, but I, a point I was gonna make before that happened is, uh, cause that's another thing though. Cause like, if you look down and look at your speed limit, it's like, oh, I'm going 60. Um, like then it's like okay that that person deserved to be mad like and either way like as long as i don't hate you if you actually like were to call the cops and be like oh this guy just flew by me i'm going way under the speed limit and he flew by me like if you're that person like yeah just just give up your driver's license walk everywhere or just stay in your house because you're clearly like an absolute selfish jerk that doesn't care about anyone around you I still find this kind of cool and incredible. I mean, like, look at that. Ted, the crew set at 80. It's only using 100 horse. And I guess that's a a little bit of a, yeah, better. Coming up on an exit, and I don't want to end up stuck by this camper. Um, but yeah, even that, like, I mean, it's got... 702 and it's like it's hard to even get it to five i mean i guess i wasn't on it very hard there but it's like hard to even get it to 500 <laughs> like they're not hard but um but that's actually another thing like uh observation thing that i was gonna add when i was talking about the uh the driving the different vehicles because like this this thing's at like 1800 rpms at the crew set at 80 um the car's about the same and that makes sense because it's got uh, nine speed, so it's like an eight and a nine speed, you know, it's probably gonna be similar RPMs, even though they're very drastically different engines. Um, but then the Jeep, because of the way it's geared, is at like 24, I think. I can't remember right off the top of my head. But the one that made me really think of this wasn't the Jeep, it's the bike. Because to be at the speed limit on my bike, it, it's at like 4,200 RPMs. It's like more than double. It's kind of kind of funny. 
I'm assuming I caught that in the last video, but maybe not. But that's kind of neat. Um, the RPMs where it's like it, it'll show up the gears. It's like that's got really neat when you're slowing down to turn like that. And that's kind of interesting. I just made like it's more than a 90 because like the highway is kind of like at an angle to the town. So when you turn, kind of doing like this sort of and kind of almost coming back on yourself just a touch. And to only get down to fourth is kind of kind of neat. I started digging through these because I haven't really messed with them a ton. And I'm, but I was pretty sure at that moment when that, uh, I was talking about that camper, I'm pretty sure I hit a new top speed, so I'm trying to find where that is. Um, but yeah, and then I kind of got on that. Yeah, I mean, I'm going slow, but it's like, I mean, I don't even know. Like, what, how much horsepower is that when it's like at the bottom of the graph? Like, 10? Like, it's, it's kind of intriguing, like, how much control there is over, like, when there's that much power. Because, like, there, I mean, I'm coasting up to a stop sign now. But it's like, it's kind of intriguing because obviously it's running. There's still some horsepower. So I'm a, I'm a horrible father because my kid was over in, his, in the shade in his sandbox. Like, you've seen where the sandbox is. Um, my dad built it in a great spot because those trees there keep it shaded. And that roof keeps it mostly shaded. So like... In the early afternoon, when the sun's kind of coming over these trees and can get under that roof, the whole thing's in the sun, but it's only for like an hour. So it's in the shade often enough, the sand stays really cool. But he was in the shady part. And I said like, oh, do you want to jump on the trampoline after I watch the truck? And he's like, no, I want to do it now and got on the trampoline. So we went from nice, cool sandbox in the shade. I think he's going back to his sandbox. Um, to, oh, I see what's happening. I'm an idiot. But uh, yeah, he went from nice, cool sandbox in the shade of this trampoline like I tried to climb the I took my flip-flops off to climb this ladder and then I was like uh these are foam bottoms so I don't care and took them put them back on because that ladder was so hot it cooked my foot um but yeah my dad had like started to roll the hose up and I thought it was hooked up and I thought I wasn't reaching I was like that's where I parked the car it shows how long the truck is because I can't quite get it to reach the back but no it was just partly rolled up so I am just a moron but yeah I'm gonna use the pressure washer because like some of the, like the bugs, and like this, anything that's rough plastic or like where the bumpers that textured stuff, like no matter how good you scrub, it's hard to get stuff out. So I'm gonna, gonna try to get all, all that good and clean before I get rid of the pressure washer and go to regular hose. Yeah, my dad went crazy this morning and uh, cleaned this. So this is all dirt free. And it's so hot that big puddle is dry basically yeah oh yeah since i'm uh, not smart enough they use like the pressure washer it wasn't just the hose see that's where he's at and then since it stays in the shade like i underestimated it yesterday because like sand is kind of more fascinating than it is because like it's that deep it's like you know an inch and it's already super cool but it's kind of funny because like if you're in a desert or something like over here but it's in the sun like if i stood still on it my feet would probably blister but then like, like literally like this, it's like this part's actually pretty much cold. And then this part is like, could probably almost blister you. It's kind of, kind of fascinating. I wish I would have caught this. Cause I mean, obviously it wasn't going to be one piece, but I guess not necessarily. Cause the one of my parents Tahoe is, but I'm like going to grab it. And I'm like, how do I get this giant monstrosity out of here? Cause obviously, I mean, it's not super bad, but I mean, I'm cleaning, so I need to clean it. And, uh, and I guess also, duh. But when that came apart, I'm like, oh my god, yes! Like, I was just stoked. Because uh, that's going to make everything easier forever. It'll be kind of like the Jeep top, too. Because you got to put, like, this one overlapping the other. That's kind of cool, too. The ram isn't just, like, some chintzy little, like, painted on thing or anything. It's red all the way through. It's kind of neat. Kind of intrigued what those are for. Because it says you can cut them out. What do those line up with? The... Oh, that Oh, that lines up with the... But yeah, if you want to put strap something down back here, it lines up at the corners. I'm kind of happy they didn't cut those out because regardless of how much I use these, um, that just like that would be a spot for a bunch of dirt to get and hang out. And I don't like that. I don't know. I was actually even pointing at that. Like, yeah, this would be a good place for dirt to get in and hang out in. And then it's not like this thing isn't sealed super, super tight. 
Oh my god, there's a centimeter measuring and an inch measuring on there too. But yeah, I think all it would do is let dirt underneath that or into that. You can tell the world's not in a very good place when they have to put warnings on floor mats for vehicles to read the owner's manual and not do certain things. This is going to be really funny because those mats keep enough of the dirt off. Like, I'm going to string out the vacuum hose and everything for like about 20 seconds worth of vacuuming. I got the vacuum cleaner out already and it's kind of pinned in by a welder, but I mean like this is the side that's used the most obviously and still basically nothing. I guess I'm also super careful. But yeah, this is another thing. If anybody's interested, you got first aid kit, radio, hoodies, snow brush for that time, um, a cold compress thing, um, some gloves and a, an emergency banner thing, obviously tow rope, um, jumper cables. Those, these are actually really nice. I thought they'd be chintzy because I got them for like 20 bucks. And Energizer brand, but those are some of the nicest clips I've seen. This is full of um, ratchet straps. But it's kind of like, that's kind of a tour of how I personally load something out that I know is going to be going in the mountains and or hauling things. And then, I actually have nothing in here yet because that thing's so big, but then I got an, a flashlight in the Jeep. I have a crank flashlight uh, ammo for my hunting rifle, an emergency roadside flare, kind of a hardcore carabiner, lighter, earplugs if you go shooting, brush tee, and a few emergency flares. It's kind of a similar build out in the Jeep. Um, my first aid kit is like, I've got like water and MREs, like that thing. We can like flip that thing over up in the mountains and survive for months. Um, but yeah, it's got all that. And other than that, it's about the same build out. And then the car has basically the same stuff, minus some of the more mountain specific stuff. That's another thing I like about cool floor mats. I'm gonna leave a little indentation on the carpet. I honestly don't think I ever pointed it out, but like when we peeled the plastic off these, the glue didn't come off worth of crap. Finally got it off and did the other three. But let's see, I'll do one. Yeah, cause like, that's the way they all were. You kinda gotta rub vigorously, but yeah, I'm getting all that off too. This uh, kind of felty stuff. That's all right. See, this is why I didn't like, cause like, I don't like it on the wheel there. Cause like, it's already kinda getting ugly. But like where I wiped it there, like it actually didn't, I thought it might just be all smeared and horrible, but it's not actually, so it ain't. It ain't too bad, I guess when things are new, like nothing's as caked in as like in the Jeep where you've been mudding with the top and doors off or Top and doors off and accidentally ended up muddy. What? Can you do what? Vacuum ants up? No. No. Okay, I didn't spend that much time on the inside, but like now the touchscreen's off limits because it's clean again. I've got a couple spots I'm going to use some access cleaner because like whatever that weird stuff was, it almost looked like someone like took their makeup y face and smashed it up against it. But Megan doesn't wear makeup that much anymore. It's just like with work and stuff, she never. Like she doesn't feel like doing it before going to work. And then like I've seen nurses that are like all, you can see their picture or something, they're all made up. And I'm like, would you even want to do that? And she's like, no, that seems insane to go work that hard with makeup on. But yeah, whatever it was like, yeah, it, it's it's coming really clean. Still a lot of, a lot of scuffs and stuff already that kind of suck, but you know, it's a mountain truck. Well, slash Baja truck. Um, I don't know if it was intentional by Stellantis. But this is the same way as in the Jeep or the passenger side one, or the Freedom Tops are, where the passenger side one is the one that goes under the driver's side one. You can tell your truck's fast when they put an indentation in the floor if you have to get, get, you have to get on the brake really hard. But I find this really cool because these come up the side here and cover this, which in almost every vehicle I've ever had or even seen, because working at Enterprise, I had to clean a lot of them. Those are like some of the two worst spots that get like a lot of dirt on them and then never really come clean. And then, Sweaty back mark. Awesome. I just noticed this too, because I forgot to clean these. But it actually says RAM on the uh, pedal. It almost feels like it's just painted on, so it'll come off way before anything else. But yeah, those are, I mean, they're cool, but they're sort of pointless. My mom's funny. The uh, dog needed brushed. They keep forgetting to buy him a new brush. So she used uh, an old hairbrush that was laying around. It's kind of funny. Oh, I, I got the video going just a touch too late. Um, Nathan left that broom randomly laying. Don't attack him with it. He left that broom laying randomly in the driveway. So the dog picked it up and ran with it. So then next thing you know, we end up with Nathan let go, bud. Well, go put it away. Um, you end up with a, a kid chasing a dog across the field to get a broom back. Yeah, as I thought about this a little bit, like I said, like that would be such a huge place to collect dust. 
Like, it would almost be easier to, like, either if you were going to be putting some kind of big in the back seat, take these out or just, like, prepare to flip them up or something. Or just, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't think... I would never want those holes cut out. And then it would also, like, you know, if enough got in there, it'd start getting, like, spreading. And it, yeah, I mean, like, these mats keep, like, basically everything off the floor as they are now. Okay, so this is uh, pretty interesting. I was grabbing Nathan's booster seat to throw it in the in there. And, like, I was just kind of, like, swinging it by my side, you know, and heard something rattling around. I was like, what the heck? So I pulled, like, the cup holders out and shook it until something fell out. And I'm like, okay, the sound ain't there anymore. What is it? A freaking crawfish claw. Like, I don't know. My parents did at Silver Lake, but I don't know. Or did we find crawfish there? I don't remember. But I don't think I've ever seen, really seen crawfish sign there. So, Megan reminded me that the, uh, the thing that tells you what the highest speed is is on the dash. And then I was like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna look at these menus more. I found it, I'll get there. Um, but yeah, that must reset after you unhook a trailer because the boat trailer was there. I mean, that probably would have been like 30 miles, 30 or 40 maybe. But yeah, that must just be like act like an active one. Um, I thought this was kind of cute, how it's got, I'm just going to do this instead of zooming, how it's got the uh, stethoscope for the vehicle diagnostics, and that's kind of cute because I have a nurse wife, uh, I think that's kind of neat, um, let me go, performance pages, performance pages, performance, that is incredibly disappointing, I mean, because if I'm going to get that close, like the fact I didn't get over 100, I mean, I, I was just like, I explained where that person was doing the camping in the passing lane thing that drives everybody nuts, and they were coming up on a camper, a tr uh, truck pulling a camper that was going pretty slow, and I didn't want to get trapped behind him because the one in the passing lane was only going like maybe 65. So it's like I would have, I would have been like way off the cruise and slowed down. Um. So yeah, like. I mean, it wasn't like I was going for a high speed, but yeah. And then like, you could probably see like a little bit of sway from those bumps. That's one of those ones that like, you hit that on a Harley and it like half feels like you're going airborne. Um, but another thing, I don't think, I think it got mentioned ever so slightly, but yeah, like this is the, like actually just showing. Cause this is that day when I was like, wow, I can't believe it did that wet. But those times for the quarter mile, I literally, like the moment I like glanced at this screen and I saw it roll over to an eighth mile, I lifted. Cause I was like, well, first off, like I wasn't super far from a turn, but with it wet, I wasn't like staying super stable. But then that's still a pretty good, cause I mean, I still haven't launched it even mildly hard, have not even used launch control yet. So like, yeah, that's, that's some pretty impressive numbers with not really running it actually hard at all.